But church, man, I pray, man, uh, despite things that have gone on in this community, despite things that have gone on in your own personal life, and I pray that this weekend, indeed, that you had a blessed weekend, man, that yeah. you have a glorified Christ Jesus, that he's ex exposed himself to you in an awesome way. And I believe, man, that we're going to have a, a Holy Ghost good time to, today, man, in services as we come closer to the closing of our sermon series called Standing in the Gaps. And in this sermon series, man, we have learned how we can stand in the gap. And what's so awesome, man, is, is to hear again about so many of you guys who have stood in the gaps, whether it's the gaps in the churches or the gaps in the homes or in the community, in your workplace, on your school. Man, it's just been absolutely awesome to hear these things and today what we're going to be talking about as we continue in the standing in the gap uh, a sermon series man is a gap that each one of us need to be standing in but the truth be told the only people who will stand in these gaps are people who truly trust in the Lord Jesus Christ the only ones who will be standing in this gap are truly those who live out Matthew 6:33. The only ones who will be standing in this gap are the people indeed who are obedient to him. They will be the only ones that we will see indeed standing in this gap. Because the gap that we're going to be talking about today is a gap of planting for your future. Planting for the future, your future, the future, the community's future, this church's future. <coughs> You know, right after, not long after the uh, signing of the uh, Constitution of, uh, um, of the United States, a baby named John Chapman was born in Massachusetts. Many of you guys may know exactly who John Chapman is. But uh, uh, not much is known about his early years, but what we do know is when he became a young man, he began to work in a western Pennsylvania <coughs> cedar mill. And in the early 1800s, Pennsylvania was on the move for the westward frontier of our nation. <coughs> Some began to move westward and some uh, 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 past the boundary that they've already felt comfortable with. But many believe that the country was still too rugged, too rough, too underdeveloped to begin to leave those sections of the world that have been developed and to go out and settle. But it was one day while John was at work at the cedar mill that he began, he began to become possessed by an idea. Possessed by a vision that grabbed his heart to become one of the influential in preparing the future for our great nation that he could have ever dreamed of in his entire life. One obvious uh, a byproduct of working in a cedar mill was that of seeds. The cedar mill produced piles and piles and piles of apple seeds. Now many begin to look at these mounds of apple seeds as absolutely useless, but one man saw their value. One man saw a vision. One man began to understand the gap that he could fill with these seeds. It captivated him. It, it was the, uh, the main focus of his, of his vision that, that God Almighty had given him. And one day after planning like crazy, he began to fill large bags with these seeds. He goes to his foreman and he lets him know that indeed he wasn't giving a two weeks notice, but his vision called him to leave now. So indeed he quit his job and he prepared to head out west. And as he traveled, he planted apple trees all along the way. This young man was clever in Holy Ghost. This young man had a purpose in Holy Ghost. He knew that like thousands of sellers who were going to come after him, he began to plant indeed for their future. He began to plant for the vision of, the, of our nation with its westward expansion. <coughs> he saw the difficulty in this challenge indeed that the West had held. So he was going in there to meet this challenge. He knew that with the increasing multitudes that were eventually going to settle and begin to establish families all across our great nation, there would be little available, available to sustain them during their travels and to secure them while they arrived at settling sites. So all along his travels, where farms might be, where farms would not be, where people might stumble, where he knew people indeed would be, he began to plant all types of apple trees. Seeds in, in all these places, man. And he did this in the expectation that when the pioneers would follow him, fruit would already be available and waiting for them. Yes, indeed, man. John, indeed, faced elements. He had to learn how to begin to intermingle with Indians. He had to begin to learn how to get through hardships in order to truly pursue his dream. This was a man of faith. People say that he was committed to Christ like crazy. 
shared his testimony everywhere that it was that he was able to go. It was said about him, John Chapman, that not only did he plant physical seeds in the ground, but that he carried around the most special seeds, and that was the spiritual seeds that he planted in the hearts of every man and every woman, every boy and every girl that he came across, that he met, that he ran into. He shared the gospel of Jesus. This was a man with a vision for the future. This is a man who saw tomorrow's possibilities. This was a man who stood in the gap for his country and sowed into it in faith. And those who came after trying to debunk what it is that he has done. People who want to make a living off trying to debunk history have indeed uh, 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 labeled him as insane. John Chapman, uh, many people try to tell you, was insane, but think about it, they probably think the same about us. People who are so sold out for a vision that indeed we will leave everything behind to bring our vision into reality. The vision that Christ Jesus has given us. And that's exactly what it is that he did. Truth be told, John Chapman is not just the only. There were many among uh, 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 men and people, men and women in his in his time, man, that became that sowed into making our nation the great nation to God be the glory that it is that we live in today. But if you begin to go out and look, man, there was a small monument in in, in uh, uh, the heart of America, in Indiana, that indeed you can go there and they have a small burial site for John Chapman. But what's cool, man, is if you begin to look into it and if you go there trying to find the name John Chapman, you're never going to find it. Why is that? Because the settlers who came after him, the settlers who came after him and, and had food already available for their family gave him another name. Johnny Appleseed. Perhaps some of you guys know that man. This is a man. Praise the Lord who had an awesome vision. This was a man, praise the Lord, who stood in the gap for his family, who stood in the gap for your family, who stood in the gap for settlers, who stood in the gap for this great country that he loved, that he knew God had blessed him to be a part of. So indeed, he stood in the gap. Church, I have to ask you, how about you? Do you stand in the gap for your country? Do you stand in the gap for your community? Do you stand in the gap for your family? Do you stand in the gap indeed for your church? Because that's what it's about. <clears throat> it's about standing in the gap. And when you begin to plant for the future, do you plant for the future of your life, for your family's life, for the life of the church? Do you begin to plant uh, for the future for those who are unsettled in their walk with Christ, going around to and fro, man, not knowing what life is going to bring them, lost days, confused? Do you begin to plant seeds so that they could indeed come in and eat? Because that's exactly what John, John the Appleseed did. And, uh, Philippians 4, <clears throat> 10 through 18 says this. This is Paul. He says, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever it is that I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Someone say, can I get over it? <laughs> Whether it was with a full stomach or an empty, with plenty or with little. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even so, when you have, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought the good news, and then traveled from Macedonia. You were the only ones who sowed into me financially. You were the only ones who planted for my future, planted for the future of the gospel, planted for your future. He says, no other church did this. He says, not even, uh, 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 even when I was in the Thessalonians, mercy me, I'm just tearing that up. Thank you, sis. You sent help for me uh, uh, more than once. I did this because I want, I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Whether I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At that moment, at this moment, I have, every, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Amen. A sweet-smelling aroma 
a sweet smelling sacrifice that indeed is pleasing to God. If you haven't got indeed what it is that we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be standing in the gap and talking about tithing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, praise the Lord, man. That's awesome. Because listen now, because while he's shouting out amen and getting excited, many others are going, crap. <laughs> Hey, don't you gotta go to the bathroom and then I'll just follow suit. Nice. <laughs> I used to do that at Whoa. <laughs> but indeed, we're gonna be talking about tithing, man, and, and or or we could go New Testament since I understand like a lot of times when we talk about tithing, some people go, "What well, tithing, Pastor? Is Old Testament?" I'm a giver. Okay, well, that's awesome because if you're not a tither, 10% like Old Testament says, then you're a giver. And New, New Testament says that if you're a giver, then you give far more than 10%. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you? A tither or a giver? Can I get away from it? So this is absolutely awesome. And so praise the Lord. But that's indeed what it is that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about those givers, those planters, those people who indeed plant for the future. Because a plant or a sower, a tither, a giver, understand that they are sowing into a harvest. Yeah. And to sow into a harvest is awesome. That's right. These are people on a mission. And they know that their mission indeed is one of the most important and the greatest missions in this world. It yeah. is to see to it that the message of Amen. Jesus Christ continues to be spread. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. That is absolutely awesome for those people who are so willing to be so faithful indeed in their giving, to be so faithful to listen to what it is that the word says. So we say thank you to those men who indeed are so faithful yeah. in their giving because yes. understand, you support this church. This church does not have a backing. Right. And I'm not up here, listen, we're not up here having a TV, uh, although I love TVN, but we're not up here having a TVN <laughs> telethon or a praise a thon right. to try to get you guys to so that I'm simply teaching you to work. Amen. But I will say to God that we're to drag on my God yeah. that this church has no backing. Right. We don't have a backing from uh, uh, the Baptist organization, the Methodist organization, Catholic right. or Jesus. Assembly of God. No, we have the backing from Holy Spirit yeah. and the obedience of Holy Spirit to yeah. the That's our backing in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. So we say thank you for those who of you who are faithful in that because not only do you support this church, but you feed, you help feed and you support Amen. everybody else in the church who does not. Yeah. So to God be the glory indeed for you. You are awesome. Amen. But what's so awesome and those who are faithful in their giving they're more than just tithers, man. And they're people with a vision. They're people, man, who will see to it that source church's vision will continue to go on and do what it is that Christ yes. Jesus has called us to do. You support it. Every time we pull in a, a crack addict or a drug addict off of the street, you've, you've sold into that. Yes. Every time we're able to send somebody to the house of prayer, you've sold into that. Every time that we're able to spread the gospel of yes. Jesus Christ, you've sold into that. Every time somebody's able to bring a loved one into the church and yeah. their loved one's life gets radically changed, not because of us, but because right. of the Holy Ghost, yeah. You sold into Amen. that. Every time that we are able to get horror mamas to begin to turn their life around and yeah. deadbeat daddies to begin to turn their life yeah. around, understand you sold Amen. into that. And it's absolutely yeah. awesome. Every time we begin bringing the broke, busted, and disgusted, and they begin to get restored and renewed and refreshed, understand you have sold into that. Amen. And it's absolutely awesome. Amen. You supply this church and you allow its vision to keep going. Visionaries, man. Dig deep in the mighty name of Jesus. They are somebody, man, who is able to see into tomorrow. Think about it, man. Sometimes, just be real, sometimes uh, we'll get calls from uh, Interfaith. You know, uh, we link up, uh, a lot of churches on the other banks link up with Interfaith. And uh, uh, somebody comes from need or and Interfaith will let you know, hey, we're going to pay so-and-so X amount. Would you guys mind chipping in, blah, 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 and paying the rest? You know, yes. Uh, or vice versa sometimes, but also what Interfaith will begin to do is say, hey, just to let you know, so-and-so is going to be coming to your church, but they're scamming. They've hit every church, and we found out that they really don't need what it is that they're saying that they need. So what's cool is sometimes when people come in, that whether Interfaith has called us or not, but they need help with something. So one thing that we are big on, we're big on helping the people in our yeah, community. Right. And yeah. No matter what, we love to help. But at the same time, if you come in and I'm paying, with the church is paying your power bill or your rent, I want to know what you have in order 
to see to it that next month this is not going to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm not asking it to be little. I'm, I'm asking it to see, okay, well, listen, uh, how can we help you get your ducks in a row yeah. to see to it that this does not happen again? And, and sometimes, the truth be told, those people can't see into tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. Well, we have to come up with a game plan because if you can see into yeah. tomorrow, then your tomorrow is going to be awesome. Right. Amen. Come on. As a church, if we are helping somebody, if we pay a bill or, or, or whatever it may be, if I can see into tomorrow, then you best believe that we're going to write out whatever it is that you need help Amen. with. Because we are going to see into tomorrow. We're going to see, one, how Christ is going to bless this church. Yeah. And two, we're going to see how what Christ has blessed us with, how it is needed, is going to begin to bless you. Yeah. So it's important that we can begin to see into our tomorrows. Yeah. Because when we can see into the tomorrow of the church, you guys are going to want to sow into yeah. the yeah. tomorrow yeah. of this church. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that's so important. Yeah. Someone who ties, sows, gives, plants, understand you guys are so faithful and you bless this church. You bless these people. You bless this community. Amen. And indeed, that's what it's about. Yeah. Because truth be told, in order for us to, the Source Church, to reach the Outer Banks, for us to reach uh, 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 eastern uh, 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 part of this, this country, or to spread it across this nation, to go into the different parts of this world that people from Source Church indeed have done and will continue to yeah. do. Understand, we need people who are planters for the future. Amen. We need people who are faithful in their giving. If you want to be a part of what Holy Ghost is doing here, man, then we expect uh, 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 people to begin to sow into it and to begin to be faithful to what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing and what the Lord Jesus Christ says. Amen. I heard it told me one time when I was asking the pastor about tithing and he said, well, think about it, man. You don't go to Outback and pay Applebee's. <laughs> That's true. You know, I mean, because a lot of people go, well, I don't tithe. What I do is I sow seeds here and I sow <laughs> seeds there, blah, blah, blah. Well, no. Scripture lets us know that your tithe goes to the storehouse. Your yeah. tithe goes to yeah. the local church. Yeah. An offering, praise the Lord, which we yeah. should also be doing, yeah. but an offering you could then begin to plan out in other areas of right. ministry, right. whether it's through your local yeah. church or if you're blessing another church or you're blessing just a ministry anywhere else. But that's an offering. Indeed, that is not your tithe. So we have to begin to grab a hold of our tithes and indeed of our offerings. Right. But check this out now. I got a chart. <laughs> so people who do not tithe, seventy-seven percent. People who tithe, eleven percent, and people who make offerings, twelve percent. Now, if you begin to grab a hold of this in the church world, now I've, I've said this millions of times before, but but, but I'll say it once again, uh, just because we're on the subject. Oftentimes people say, uh, I, I, come, I talked to a fellow one time who was in the military and he, he stormed out of here one night um, because we were talking about how good God was and he got offended and he left on the front porch. So I went out there and I began to talk to him and uh, he began to tell me, Pastor, how can you say that God is good? I've been in all types of wars and I've seen death and he said, I've seen starving kids, so how can you tell me that God is good? So I asked him, I said, well, are you, were you ever a believer? And he said, yes, I used to be until I've seen the things that I've saw. And I told him, I said, well, then if you've seen starving kids, I said, I have to ask you, when you were a Christian, did you tithe? Come on. And he said, well, every once in a while. I said, but you did not tithe faithfully. He said, no. I said, then don't blame my God for starving kids that you're refusing Amen. to feed. Amen. Hello. Amen. You know why there's starving kids out there? It's not because of the government. Right. Come on. There's not starving kids out there because of these countries who are so poor. There's starving kids out there because 77% of Christians don't tithe. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're starving kids. That's true. See, it's not the government's job in country, in state, in community, in this world to feed the kids. Right. To feed the communities. It's our job. Yeah. And if every Christian tithe that was supposed to tithe, instead of the 10% that they're supposed to, instead of the 2.5% that actually do tithe, there would be an additional $180 billion available to the church world. And if the church world then began to take $80 billion of that, every basic, every basic need in this entire world would be met. <coughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Amen. That's crazy. 
But we have 77% of people who do not tithe, 11% of people who do, 12% of people who give an offer, and we keep the lights off just for a little bit longer. So, and, but what's so crazy, man, is I just want to say, man, first and foremost, thank you so much to those of you guys who indeed are so faithful and indeed tithe the way that it is that you're supposed to be tithing. I truly praise God for you Amen. because it's you 11% that keep this church running. Yeah. It, besides Holy Ghost, but it's you 11% that keep this church running. It's you 11% that are feeding those sitting next to you, behind you, in front of you, and, 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 and anywhere else that they may be. Indeed, it is you, and we thank you so much for your faithfulness, first and foremost, to Jesus Christ. Come on. But then second of all, your faithfulness to this church. I say thank you to so many men and women who are tithing today, even knowing as they begin, let's just be real, even knowing as they begin to drop in their money into the tithing plate, they automatically know the rest of this week and or the rest of this month is going to be extremely, extremely tight. Yeah. Yeah. But yet your faith still causes you to drop it in. And you don't drop it in. You Oh, right? And to that man, to God be the glory, I say thank you and yes indeed because it is his anyway. Right. And third, to God be the glory, I say thank you that you love your family so much. Not just your church family, but your immediate family. Yeah. That you begin to plant seeds for their future. Amen. I say thank you that you love them so much. That you're going to be so faithful to what God's word says. So husbands, if you're married to a tithing woman, wives, if you're married to a tithing and a giving man, shut up with your nagging. Stop with your complaining. Stop bickering her. Stop nagging him. Because it becomes so obvious to me when I begin to read scripture that he cares more about your family, that she cares more about your family than you do because they're willing to be so faithful to what the word says. We just don't be real in church. Amen. So come on, somebody. That's what the word says. But can you just imagine for a second? And I, we're not just talking about a, a source church. Let's look at this as global. If 77% of the church world begin to come and be faithful like 11%, my God, what we could begin to do. Yeah, that's right. But now let's look at it for source. If this 12%, just the 12%, came in to the 11%, Amen. my God, can you imagine yeah. what the church would be able to begin that's to do? Right, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it when people begin to come up to me and pass, you know, why isn't this wall down? Or why isn't this taking place? Or why isn't that taking place? And I, then I love to go, well, have you been tithing? Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, well, uh, it's just been a little tough this week. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. Come on. Right, right, right. Come on. Hello. Hello. You know what I'm saying? We all understand it's yeah. been a little bit tight yeah. this week. Right, right. But some of us also understand faithfulness right. and right. obedience right. and trust. Right. And that's 11% of us. Come on. But can you imagine if the 12% became into this 11% and if this piece of pie just began to get a little bit bigger? Can you imagine the needs that we would be able to meet within house, whether it's on the house or the people, and the needs that we'd be able to meet upon our community? That's right. Because I am a firm believer <coughs> that the government again, should not be assisting yeah. our people. Right. Yeah. It should be the local church. Yeah. But as long as there's only 11% of church, then it's never going to be able to do what it is that Christ yeah. has called us yeah, and right. commanded us to do from the very get-go. He never once said, rely on the government to meet the needs of the people. No. When his disciples said, Jesus, there's so many of them, can't you send them away? He said, sit them down and you feed them. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say, go to DSS. He didn't say, go to interfaith. He didn't say, check with this. No, he said, you feed them. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe that I have a responsibility as a pastor of this church to feed his people yeah. in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. But I need help, far more help. That's right than just 11% of my people Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus so that indeed we can truly begin to feed 
his people. Hallelujah. Meet the needs of every man, woman, boy, or girl that comes in here for assistance. Yeah. That's what we need now. Amen. So I break it down to you <clears throat> like this. Paul says, I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I praise the Lord for the Johnny Apple seeds who, uh, uh, who actually begin to sow into the vision that Source Church has. The vision that Christ Jesus has given us. That your faithfulness to sow into it is absolutely awesome. Those who are planting a crop, not just for themselves, but you're planting a crop again for other people to come in and eat on. Yeah. You are awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He says, I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Now, this is the thing. I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I believe that the, the reason why the majority of believers <laughs> do not tithe like they're supposed to, do not give like they have been entrusted to do, I believe the reason for that is simply because we are a people who are not content with whatever it is that we have. Right, Tell it. Right. We're not content with knowing that our financial week is going to be a struggle. So since we're not content with that, instead of being the 11%, perhaps we pop into the 12% and we'll throw in a five buck or a 10 buck into the offering, uh, offering plate. So we no longer are the tithers, now we're just the givers because now that just makes us feel good. But notice, he didn't say offering, he said tithes and offerings. So then what we begin to do since we're not content with, with anything and everything that we have, so we begin, begin to become the 11 to the 12, or we hop from the 11 to the 77, or the 12 to the 77, and since we're not content with everything, well then the truth be told, I'm just not going to give. So since I'm not content with having it to be a little bit of a struggle this week, I'm not going to give. So what I would rather be doing is rob God. Right? Instead of being spiritual and no, yes, it might be a little tough, but I'm still going to be faithful. I'm still going to be obedient. I'd rather be fleshful and stay in the 77% because then after all, things might be a little bit less tight. But check this out. He says, I'm content. If you begin to break in the word content, it means to be contained. So in order to find out what Paul is actually saying, we have to look into both of those words. Contain means to, to be restrained, to have a restraint, to, be, to have calmness, to be controlled. So what Paul is actually saying man, is he was restrained from freaking out when things didn't look like they were going to work out. Well, he wasn't restrained from his flesh because his flesh would not want to sow in to be faithful like he was supposed to be. So he had to be restrained from the supernatural. Yeah. He had a calmness about him even when things didn't look like he was going to be able to pay all of his bills. Even when it didn't look like he was going to be able to put food on his table, he had a calmness about him. Why? Because he understood that his faith was controlled not by his flesh, but his faith indeed was controlled by Jesus, who ruled and reigned in his life. And since Jesus had control over his life, since Holy Spirit dwelled all up inside of him, he had no choice but to have a calmness come over him because he knew that despite the way things look, despite how tough things are going to be, God Almighty is in control. Everything and anything I have is in the hands of God Almighty. And my full belly is in the hands of God. My empty belly is in the hands of God. And whether I'm feeding on a lot or I'm feeding on a little, I know that my God will sustain me. So I am content with indeed whatever it is that I have. And truth be told, what Paul is saying, with the little bit that I have in my hand, if I place it in the control of God's hand, it's going to go a whole lot further than all of it that I have in my hand if I try to stay in control of it. Yeah, yeah. And we have to indeed begin to grab a hold of that. If we allow Christ to control every aspect of our life, then that 10% that we're asking Him, oh, that He asks us about, is going to go further. 10% will go further than the 90% that will be in your hand. That 10% is going to go further than the 100% if you refuse to give that's going to be placed in your hand. Well, I just, I, I just can't afford to do that. Well, that, you can't afford to do that because oftentimes what Christians mess up is we do that last. When indeed he calls us to do that first. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed that that's the first 
offering, the first uh, of fruits that you give, the first yeah. check that you write, the first money pulled out of your check. If you begin to do that first, you would be amazed at how far that 90% of your money would actually go. Amen. Does it mean that things aren't going to be tough? Nope. You might still have tough times for a little while. But just like Johnny Appleseed, man, when he began to plant those apple trees, right. they didn't automatically, bing, whoa, wow, I just threw a seed in the ground and look at this tree. <laughs> <laughs> it took time, man. Yeah. But I will promise you this. Blessings from being faithful, blessings from being oh, obedient, yeah. indeed are going to come because yes, my God said so. Yes. If his word does not return back to you. That's right. Oftentimes, though, we believe that we can't afford to tithe. And when we say these things, it's because we are not content in our faith. We do not believe that everything that God says that God is going to do, we begin to put a restraint on God's blessings. We have no calmness in our faith. Many people have no calmness in their faith, and then they'll struggle and they'll uh, bigger back and forth within themselves and then they end up tithing and then they end up causing a war within themselves. Why? Because they're not even tithing and offering the proper way that he tells us to. So we are beginning to be controlled not by Holy Spirit and giving in obedience and giving in joy yeah. <laughs> but indeed we're controlled by our flesh right. and now we're giving out of anger, we're giving out of frustration or we're just simply not giving at all, and then we become a thief, and we mm. become a robber. Right. Now I'm just talking scripture, amen? Right. Well, I can't afford to be a Johnny Appleseed, then I would have to ask you, well, not being a Johnny Appleseed, how's that working out for you now? Come on. Come on. That's right. It's tough. It's hard. I need this, and I need that. Well, then begin to be a Johnny Appleseed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you're like me, sometimes, indeed, yes, you're going to have a whole lot of month at the end of the money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also awesome. But what's awesome is when I run out of that money before that month is done, Christ Jesus always, always yeah. shows up. Yeah. I promise you, I've never missed a meal unless I was fasting. Come on. Yeah. I've never slept out, uh, out on the street unless I was camping. <laughs> I've always had a roof over my head. Amen. There's been times, I've shared this before, but there's been times that we've, we've tithed and, and paid bills and then we realize now we only have 32 cents in our checking account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, pastors struggle too. Right. Come on. Yes. But you throw that offering bucket, we're not sticking in our pockets. Right. Come on. Right. But what's awesome, man, is then Holy Spirit begin to speak to my sister. My sister shows up with half a food line at my house. I just don't think that's the grocery shop. You know what I'm saying? He always shows up, and it's awesome. Amen. And it's so radical, man. It is. But that's where your turnaround begins to take place. He says, I, <clears throat> I know how to live on almost nothing or everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's full of stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. I can do uh, uh, anything through Christ who gives me the strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. We want to share with everybody in their present difficulties. Amen. Amen. And we're able to share with you in your present difficulties and able to sow in financially like the church of uh, Philippians did to Paul when indeed that 11% begins to climb. Now we're doing it to God be the glory with 11% because Much. of the supernatural uh, Holy Spirit that it is that we serve. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he don't want us to stay at 11%. Right. He wants us to go up. But he says, um, you know, you Philippians are the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought uh, the good news and traveled from Macedonia. No other church did this. And I love, he says, I don't say this because I, 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 I want a gift from you. Uh, rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. I want you to receive a reward for, you, for your kindness. I don't say this church to get your tithes. Because, again, the truth is, I don't get your ties. I say this indeed, so that you will become obedient, yeah. that you will become faithful, mm -hmm. and get your blessing. Come on. Yeah. See, a lot of people don't tithe, and, and we hear it all the time, well, I don't tithe because 
uh, 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 pastors wearing a Rolex, or obviously not here because I ain't about to cover up my tattoos. Anymore. But uh, that's just what's all. But uh, you know, pastor wearing this type of suit, and he's living in this type of house, and he's driving in that type of car. So I just don't tie it. Well. It doesn't matter what pastor's doing right. with the tithes and offerings. Yes. What matters is your obedience yeah. and your faithfulness. Yeah. If he's doing something wrong with the tithes and offerings, yeah. then Holy Spirit would deal with him. That's, right. That's not your job. That's right. But if you continue to be disobedient because you view somebody else being disobedient, yes. Holy Spirit would deal with you. Yeah. Because despite what people are doing, we should still be obedient. But the truth yeah. is the church world, 77%, begin to make excuses to simply make themselves feel better as up to why it is that they're not truly trusting in Christ Jesus. Right. That they're not truly trusting in the Word of God. That they begin to rob Him and then make themselves feel better. See, some of you guys are actually Matthew 6, 33 and it's seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven and, and all these things will be added unto you while others are seeking ye first themselves and their comforts and their desires and their wishes. They're not seeking after his righteousness and their comfort. And the truth is that I used to hate to talk about tithes and offerings. I love to talk about addictions. I love to talk about sex. I love to talk about grace and mercy and love and joy and peace and salvation and redemption from Christ Jesus. I love to talk about uh, 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 the demonic and how you can be set free. But I used to hate to talk about tithes and offerings, man. And I used to hate it because of the stereotypes. But I remember the first time I had to talk about tithes and offerings. I told my beautiful wife, I said, baby, the Holy Spirit's putting on tithes and offerings for me to begin to talk about, but I don't want to. Can you give me an excuse as up to why I should just be <laughs> And my amazing wife, I, I love it. She said, well, baby, the truth be told, you don't have to. You don't have to talk about tithes and offerings. I was like, shh, okay, shh. Is that confirmation? <laughs> and she went further and she said because if you would rather be disobedient like them Ooh, oh, snap. Oh, snap. All right, oh, right. <laughs> if you would rather deal with Holy Spirit and allow him to begin to question you as up to why you're robbing your church Come on. why you're robbing your people why you're robbing God of his blessing of your church blessings and of your people's blessings then indeed, babe, don't talk about tithes and offerings. She said, but at the same time, don't be concerned about the haters. Be concerned about those who indeed will be set free. That's right. That's right. Amen. It was over close to seven years ago, but it still reigns true to me every single time. We know I'm not naive to the simple fact that those people in here right now uh, hating this message. <laughs> but I also know that there's people in here right now who are being set free. Amen. 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 See, I love it. He says, uh, 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 um, um, your reward uh, for your kindness. Understand, church. When we begin to tell people, and people grab a hold of it, and they begin to give kindly, they begin to give generously, that's when your reward begins to come in. The storehouse gets full. The community indeed gets blessed. I love that, man. He says, you receive a reward. Why? Because they gave? No. Because of their kindness in giving. Your reward, understand, is not. Your reward now. That's what I'm talking about. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about uh, uh, what you will get back. Because you get two things when you tithe. Uh, 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 if you're just a tither but you're doing it uh, um, uh, hastily, you still get a return. But you get a reward, a reward when you do it kindly, just like Johnny Appleseed. But the truth be told, you can only give kindly when you're content with what you do have or what you don't have. You can only give kindly indeed when you are controlled by Holy Spirit and not controlled by your flesh. You can only give kindly when you truly trust the word of Jesus Christ and stop indeed serving your money. Because it's twofold whenever it is that we give tithes and offerings. Twofold. Number one is you are always going to get a return for the seed that you sown. It's the law of the seed. It's the law of the sowing. Mm -hmm. You're not going to plant an apple seed and get an orange, uh, 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 an apple tree and get an orange tree. Yeah. You're not going to plant uh, watermelons and get grapes. 
You are going to get the seeds indeed that it is that you sowed. So you sow financially, you indeed are going to reap financially. You're going to receive what it is that it is that you sow. But when you sow generously, when you sow kindly, Paul says there is a reward. You are going to be rewarded. It will be as if it will be deposited in to your one spiritual account. And two, we sit oftentimes into your physical account. Yeah. But indeed, you get a reward. You're always going to get the law of the seed. What you sow, you will get. But not everybody is going to receive the reward that comes with sowing indeed kindly. And that's where it's at. I want you to reap your harvest, that you are sowing so kindly. Like Paul says, man, I'm not concerned with the amount of gift, church. We're not concerned with the amount of the gift that it is that you're giving. There's some people in here, man, who, who it, it breaks my heart when they begin to tell me, Pastor, I, I put my tithe in, but it's, 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 it was all, it was, it, I've only made 200 or, or 300 bucks, so my tithe is only 200 or $20 or $30, so I'm sorry. No, stop it. You know how awesome that is? Yeah. Truth be told, your 20 or 30 bucks off of your $200 or $300, uh, you are being so faithful and your reward yeah. 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 is going to be far greater than the one who is giving out of the abundance. Amen. Yeah. Because you're giving out of what you don't have before <coughs> widow in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Good. And there's power in that, man. Yeah. When you begin to sow in like that, when you're kind in your giving, instead of he who is giving $1,000, but yet he's doing it hastily. He, he's doing it, man, uh, out of arrogance, or he's, he's uh, uh, doing it out of anger and frustration. He hates the fact that he's getting ready to drop his 1000 bucks in there, but yet you so willingly and joyfully sowed in that $20 or $30. Understand, man, your reward is going to be far greater because it's not based on the amount of the gift. Right. It's based on the spiritual faithfulness indeed to give Amen. the gift. Yeah. Two people sow. One kindly, one not. One person gets a reward. Indeed, the one who <coughs> sowed kindly. That's where it's at. So I want you to begin to grab a hold of the spiritual side of giving generously. Because the truth is, whether you get whether you give generously or not, you're giving the church is still going to be blessed. Whether you give generously or not, in your giving, the church is still going to be able to bless the community. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Right. Because I guarantee you, what we see, we, what we receive, we give kindly. Right. So you cannot give kindly, still bless the church, and the church is going to still get its reward because we are going to then give out kindly. But I want you to receive your reward. Amen. Good. Not only do I want you to have the law of the seed, but I also want you to have uh, 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 the reward that indeed comes with it. And it's found in your generosity and your willingness to give, to become a planter indeed for the future. That's where it's at. And I love this. I'm going to be wrapping up here soon. But he says, uh, 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 verse 18, uh, um, I, I love how he talk, starts talking about the financial gift thing, and, and he goes on and he says, a, a sweet smelling aroma and an acceptable sacrifice. Yeah. The financial gift, Paul says, is like a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable to God. It is pleasing to God. He's using Old Testament slang, if you would. He's using a language that was spoken in the Old Testament in an ancient peace offering that was brought simply to thank God. It was an offering that was brought to, to thank Him, and, and it was an offering that gave them peace of heart. It gave them peace of mind in knowing Him. Think about that. Paul says, just like they gave that offering to God that was a sweet-smelling aroma. In your tithes and in your offerings, it is a sweet-smelling aroma that is pleasing to God that you should be bringing back. Why? To thank God. To thank God for what it is that He gave you. To thank God for the peace that He gave you. To thank God for the peace of heart that He gave you. To thank God for the peace of mind that He gave you. And if you are indeed knowing Him, then that is when you will give kindly. Amen. When you know him, that is indeed when he will be a planter of the future, not when you know about him. 
But indeed, when you truly know Him, when you truly have peace of heart, when you truly have peace of mind, because of your faith in knowing Jesus Christ, that's when you're given kindness. Yeah. And that's when that circle begins to come back all the way around, back to you. You yeah. give, and it's back to you. You give, and it's back to you. You give, and it's back to you. Jesus. People who encounter grace, yeah. people who receive grace, people who are changed by grace, give graciously. Hallelujah. They give graciously. Why? Because they are so thankful yeah. for what it is that God has given them. Yes. When we stand in the gap and become Johnny Appleseed, when we stand in the gap and become the church of the Philippians, and we know that it's not just in our giving, but indeed it's the way that we give. Kindness. Generosity. It's not just out of joy. It's not just in the relationship of Jesus, our loving relationship in Jesus, but it is also because we recognize the unique opportunity to sow in for the future of our families, of our church, of our community. If I can have my worship team come up. And we have this opportunity indeed by giving. Like Pastor, my finances straight suck. I understand that. But do you want that to turn around? Amen. Because if you want that to turn around, then indeed you have to begin to start now planting for your future. Yes. God gives us the opportunity day in and day out to indeed sow, to indeed to be a planter for the future, to indeed to give generously, to give kindly. So my question is, Will you take advantage of the opportunity that God has given you? Will you take advantage of the faith that Christ has given you? Will you take advantage of the calling that Christ is calling you to do? Will you take advantage of feeding your family, feeding your church, feeding the community? Will you take advantage of that and or indeed will you continue to rob God? and fail. Truth be told, church, it's up to us. Well, I got a life built, dude, and I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to trust God, and you're going to seek Him. And in your faithfulness of still giving, His faithfulness is He's going to give to you. In your kindness of giving, even though you know it's going to be tough, He's going to rock your world with some kindness. It is going to straight up grow your mind. So indeed, will you begin to take advantage of it and sow your seed. Now watch this. The principle of tithing and, and the principle of, of sowing, the principle of giving indeed for our future is found when we take advantage of the opportunity of advancing the kingdom. Why do we tithe an offering so uh, the church could get big and do all, make the church look so pretty? No. Why do we tithe to, to uh, uh, feed pastor and, and staff? No. Why do we tithe to advance the kingdom of heaven? That's why we tithe. To do what it is that Christ Jesus has called us to do. And when we begin to take advantage of that, take advantage of it for our families, take advantage of it for our church, take advantage of it for the community. And we begin to do this day in and day out like it is that we're supposed to be doing. When we begin to sow those seeds, planting for the future, that is indeed when your future will begin to get turned around. So what we have to do is begin to fill our bags with seeds just like Johnny Appleseed did. And we have to begin to walk out sowing these seeds. But with each seed that Johnny Appleseed sowed, you can only imagine how he was like, man, and I know a tree is going to be here. And I know a tree is going to be here. And I know a tree is going to be there. I am so excited, God, about these trees that you're going to cause to spring up. Can you imagine if when that time and offering bucket came by, we stopped going like this, stopped going like this, stopped going like this, but begin to go, I know. <laughs> I know my tree's coming up. I know the community's tree's coming up. I know the church's tree's coming up. Bring that bucket back here. I know that I know that I know. Take the bucket and sow it. If indeed we begin 
to live like that. We're going to get to sow in, expecting God to move. And to be so generous in your giving that you know that your generosity is going to indeed reap a reward. Understand, we are not going to rob you, nor will we ever rob you from your opportunity. That's right. But what I ask and what I encourage is that you don't rob yourself. Amen. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. God, we give you all glory and all honor. Lord, and I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I thank you, Jesus, that the other day, this awesome story, church, the other day, um, I seen this, uh, it looked like when you get out of a gum machine and you pop open that little thing and there's a toy inside, there's a little plastic bubble, I guess if you would, and it was full of like pennies and quarters and dimes. And I grabbed it and I said, <laughs> what's this? And a uh, note said, because he was, he was uh, uh, doing the um, deposit, he said, man, it was, uh, it was given in the uh, tithes and offerings. At that time, P. Rock was, oh man, praise God. He said, yeah, man, that was from Jada. Praise God. Yeah, right? <laughs> Little Jada. Yeah. Is sowing in tithes <laughs> and offerings. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Right? Do you know how much pennies, quarters, and dimes are to a five, six year old? Yeah. Come on, man. She could have gone to the bubblegum machine. She could have gone to the arcade. But she said, nope. I'm advancing the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And then it was so cool. It wasn't. p Rob didn't have a talker into it. She came to him. Daddy, I want to give this. Yes. Can you imagine if the church didn't have to go <coughs> down the aisle? Right. But the aisles came to daddy Amen. and said I want to give yeah. I want to give so Amen. I pray in Jesus name God that you would begin to change our hearts that you would give us the heart of Jada my Lord God that we would be content with what we have because Jesus thank you Holy Ghost but I'm with thank you yes Lord because when she gave she knew that when she was getting rid of the money she had she knew that she knew that she knew. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That her daddy was going to take care of her. She knew that daddy was going to see to it that she was still able to ride her bike. She knew daddy was going to see to it that she had clothes on her back. She knew daddy was going to see to it that her belly was full. If we could only grab a hold of what Jada was grabbing a hold of. And that when we tithe, when we offer, when we sow, when we plant for the future, if we only knew that God is still going to let us drive our cars, that God is still going to let us walk around, that God is still going to put clothes on our back and food in our bellies, my God, we would be so willing to give. If we could just have the faith that little old Jada had in everything, church world, home life, financial world, community would begin to change. If there's anybody here today, man, who don't know Jesus, but you want to meet the one who sowed into your life by getting on the cross, then today is your day. We can do that right now. The one man who sows into you day in and day out, the one who planted your future and has great and holy things for it. If that's you, just simply open up your heart. We're going to have everybody repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I need a Savior. There's only one, and it's you. And I thank you for forgiving me, restoring me, renewing me. I am yours. I will be faithful in the Word of God and applying it to my life. I will do what you tell me to do. Go where you tell me to go. And love how you tell me to love. And Jesus, if my heart is hardened to tithes and offerings, then break it right now. Any way that you have to. And all God's kids said,